I am not known for my patience when it comes to setting up still lifes, but I thought I'd share some tips and tricks with you. So let's get started. So today I thought we would talk a little bit about composition. Now you can read whole books on composition. They talk about the rule of sixes. Isn't there the rule of six, the rules of four, all the rules? I don't even know the rules. I just know when something kind of looks right or it doesn't look right. That's kind of what I go by. Now I have um, a lot of props over the years. Now sometimes props like this saltwater taffy uh, aren't gonna work in terms of being in the box. You can see that's pretty visually confusing, but on their own, they can be really terrific. So sometimes I collect things simply because they'll make good props, not because they're good eating or even anything that I'm um, really invested in. Uh, the other thing that I have as can't, these are my standby. These work really well as props, Giardelli squares and lollipops. You've probably seen my paintings with lollipops. So lollipop can give you that pop of color. The other thing that I use is origami paper or any kind of craft paper, Be or you can use fabric, you know, something that will sort of anchor your still life in. And now I'm gonna show you how I go about, um, some, I'm gonna show you some of my photographs and what didn't work because sometimes I hold on to photographs for years and I know they're not gonna work. <laughs> I don't know why I do that. Um, and then other times I will have a photograph that I work from and no matter, even if I'm not really plugged in, I can make a really good painting out of it. And that's simply because the source is just so good. Um, I'm not a good ph photographer. I don't think I'm a good, good photographer. The other thing I don't think I'm good at is I'm certainly not patient. And uh, I know some people who will spend a whole day setting up a still life. Uh, that's not within my personality to do. So I'm gonna talk you through just a very few simple things that I do when, uh, that help me with composition. And then I'm gonna demonstrate kind of how I set up a still life today for what I hope to paint in the next couple of days. And um, I just hope that that's helpful to you. Um, they're probably things that you've heard before. There's nothing, you know, you don't see anything on this channel that you won't see in the library or in, you know, a, a, a book that goes into long depth about the, the composition. But what I hope to do is show visually what the concept is so that you'll say, oh, now I get it. Or, aha, yeah, that makes sense. So let's roll that beautiful footage and let's get started. Okay, bye-bye. All right, really briefly, we're gonna go over some composition problems from photographs. This one has very confusing light. The light is, it just doesn't give me the information I need. It's confusing and not well lit. Here's another one that is confusing and not well lit. The first one suffered from um, too much direct sunlight and shadows that didn't make sense. And then this one doesn't have enough sunlight. And so um, it's just too dark to do anything with. So that's not gonna work. Uh, the other thing that can happen is to have something that's blown out. This was would have been fine if I had pulled the camera back, but I'm too close in. And that's just not going to work for me. I can't, I can't get any idea of depth or any perception of structures here. The next one is almost um, too simple, but I would say more than anything, it suffers from, a, you know, it's a strong horizontal subject and it's sitting on a strong horizontal piece of paper. Well, let's just yawn in unison about that, right? <laughs> Even though, of course, I was interested in the sneaker, but you have to be more inventive than just putting it down there and taking a shot. Now, we all know a famous painter who uh, did cakes and pies and had them lined up and did them beautifully, but you know, there's only one of him. And so in general, I think lining things up as a wooden soldiers is a no-no, but um, not if you're as talented as he was. This is an example of kissing, where you have two objects that are creating some tension here. And if I had just overlapped them a little bit, it would have been so much better. That little bit of tension of kissing is, is not, not good. Overlap create patterns rather than uh, tension. Uh, this one suffers from, I thought putting a dark piece of glass behind the jar with the gumdrops would be oh, just so interesting, but it's confusing. It just resulted in confusion. Now, if, it makes con if it's confusing to me as a photograph, it's gonna be confusing as a painting. This works better. The refractions and reflections here make a lot more sense because you can see the background is distorted by the glass. Whereas when I put the blue thing behind it, that just didn't work. So you take a lot of photographs and um, for you to try stuff, you know, keep trying stuff. Uh, now I'm showing what I do um, when I'm setting up a still life. First of all, I think it helps to have um, a good light source, although I'm not using a direct light source. I'm using natural light. Right now I'm really interested in using natural light because it is the way we see things in real life. 
Uh, the other thing that I'm doing is making sure that my still life objects are really close by. If you have things in different rooms, you're just going to have a tendency to say, oh, I don't want to go all the way into the room, you know, all the way upstairs to get something. Have things nearby. So I had already pre-selected these things. They go together pretty well. But you can see how they kind of don't connect at all on that white piece of paper. So I have different colored sheets of paper that I use. This is origami paper, but you can use any kind of colored sheets of paper or cloth or anything you want to do, but something to anchor down those shapes. Now, when I anchor down those shapes, I'm also very aware I'm not going to put the blue object on top of the blue piece of paper because I'll lose my blue object. So I'm very aware of color while I'm doing this. Color, shape, pattern, color, shape, pattern. Now, I want things to look like they're um, casually put there because I want to do um, a, a painting that's about a, uh, a parade. So the next thing we're going to do is take a look at some of the stills that I took and why they do or they don't work. Here we go. All right, so let's look at the struggle of this setup and see why different things don't work. I don't think this one works because you see those round balls of chocolate, they line up in a line. I don't think that's going to work. So um, I look through the viewfinder and the other thing that I see that isn't working is there's a blue piece of taffy that is going horizontally across the blue piece of paper. That's not going to work. It doesn't look like things are, it doesn't look haphazard enough. That's better. Just shifting that taffy a little bit makes for a better diagonal. But I still have the problem with the three balls in a row there. That's got to shift and change. All right, so what did I do? I just shifted the balls a little bit. They're not as much in a line as they were before. Um, so that's, I might even shift them a little bit more, but, I, but so far that was my solution to that problem. So the next thing is I start looking around at other things that need to shift and change. There we go, that's better. See, they're not lined up. Those balls aren't lined up. Um, I've got, and I don't have anything going off the paper. I don't have any of the um, pieces of candy going off the paper. There's breathing room. This is where, this I don't like. This one isn't going to work, not because of where the candy's lined up, but the colored piece of paper that I put down, I see two very distinct uh, diamond shapes, and then I don't see anything. It just distracts from the candy, so that's not going to work. That's got to go. Um, this is working a little bit better because um, I've cut off that diamond shape. But I don't like on the right, but I don't like that the stick of the lollipop is going off the side of the paper. That's leading my eye completely off. So shift it, shift it so that it isn't going off the paper. There, I like that better. These are just subtle, subtle shifts, and you have to take a lot of pictures. See, now this one almost, this is probably what I'm going to use because the different candies are spaced out as if they're waltzing. Yeah, that other one I like better than even this one again because one of the sticks of that lollipop is going off the paper there's some um, sticks that are lining up to the edge of the paper it's just it it's not it's not giving me the feels i need to feel the feels this one i don't like because that red lollipop is too uh, straight up and down that's not going to work so you know it's it's taking a variety of pictures moving things around but if something catches your eye and you know for sure oh i don't like that or that's not going to work just stick with that and, and know that that's probably true. Uh, this is one I can probably, I think I could probably use this one, although the two diamonds are still really, really strong. Now, these are, this is complex because there's so many different colors and shapes in this uh, setup that I'm currently doing. So it really helps to simplify. This is much simpler. And when you simplify, one of the things that is just smart to do so that things don't seem, um, so simple is take a picture looking up and down into the cup, for example. And likewise here, I've come down below and I'm looking up. The whole idea is uh, to create some interest. I want to see the refractions in the glass. I want to see how shapes change because of the roundness of the glass. I thought I'd try three balls. This one I find confusing. And if it's confusing to me in the photograph, then I'm not going to be able to represent it as a painting. So uh, this one isn't going to work, and I didn't even mess around with taking the picture from above or below. I just decided, no, nope, that's just not going to work. Uh, this one I think will work. This one, this one I'm kind of in. This one I'm kind of in love with. I like the um, the different cutoffs that are happening in those shapes from the glass. Yeah, this one's going to work. Now sometimes when you fall in love with a subject, this is our new arrival as of uh, 
day before yesterday. This is Henry, our new rescue collie, who is uh, too scared to even give me eye contact, but hour by hour we're getting to know each other, and, and he will be a subject very soon. I just find it's very much easier to find compositions in animals than it is uh, in still lifes, because you kind of have to breathe the life into a still life, but you sure don't with an animal. They, they bring it all that all, they bring everything you need, all the information you need. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, match your value mix for color, and I'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.